Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com and this is the first video in this video series where I'm gonna give you a complete walkthrough on how to design, model, and build a medicine cabinet using SketchUp Free. So you don't need to have any SketchUp experience whatsoever. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. Now this uh, video series is broken up among uh, several videos, so it's best to watch this in the playlist. I'll have a link in the description below if you're stumbling across this video um, outside of the playlist. But all you need to do is go to app.sketchup.com, create an account right in your browser, and you can uh, follow along in this video. So let's get started. All right, so inside SketchUp, the first thing you're gonna do is click on Josh here and just tap delete. And then we're gonna create a basic box to represent the boundaries of the medicine cabinet. So we'll use the rectangle tool, which is right here. You can also tap the letter R to activate that. And you're gonna hover over this origin point and click once and then move your mouse outwards. Now notice how in the bottom right hand corner it's showing you dimensions. So with most tools in SketchUp you can actually type in dimensions to define an absolute size for you know whatever tool you're using. So in this case the constraints of the medicine cabinet I know I want it to be 23 inches wide because the sink that it's going to be mounted above is 23 inches wide so I thought it would create some nice alignment there. So what I'll do is type in 23 inch. Since this is a rectangle, you can provide two dimensions. So you type in a comma and then the second dimension and we'll go five and a half inches. Now notice how I can type in fractions and SketchUp will actually also allow you to input decimals. So I could have put 5.5 inch and that would have worked as well. So once you're done typing in the dimension, just tap enter and that rectangle will resize. Now, to get a better view of this rectangle we just created, we need to know some basic navigation. So with your mouse, the scroll wheel allows you to zoom in and out, and it'll actually zoom to wherever your mouse is located. So if your mouse cursor is located way over here and you start zooming in, you're gonna zoom way off over there. So you wanna hover over whatever you wanna get close to or push away from and then scroll your mouse. Now the second thing is the orbit tool. Now the orbit tool is initiated by the middle mouse button. So just click and hold the scroll wheel and it'll allow you to orbit around your model. So usually what you need to do is move your cursor over to one side, click and hold the middle mouse wheel and then move the mouse over to the other side and then release. And then you just repeat that process multiple times in order to get the view that you want. So combining that with the zoom tool will allow you to pretty much get to any perspective that you want. So we have the basic footprint of the medicine cabinet. Let's go ahead and make this three dimensional. So we'll grab the push pull tool, which is right here. Also the letter P will activate that and you just click once and then move your mouse in the direction you want to extrude that shape. So the push pull will automate the process of kind of creating 3D shapes from flat faces. So we're going to bring it up towards the direction we want and then click to finish. Now I didn't land on a precise dimension. So what I want to do is immediately after using the tool, I want to type in the dimension I want. Now, by the way, if you want to change the units, you can click on this model info button here and under the length units drop down, you can select metric and decimal inches, decimal feet and select the precision. Now SketchUp is actually very precise. This precision only affects how the readout will be rounded. So just keep that in mind. So we'll go 30 inches here. So I'll just type in 30 inch and enter. So notice how the units in this 
specific model are set up as feet and inches, but I typed in 30 inches. So it's actually the same dimension, obviously. Two feet is 24 inches plus six is 30. So SketchUp is really flexible in how you feed dimensions to it. So I could have, if I wanted to, typed in two foot six inch enter, and you'll notice nothing changed there. Now, if I put three feet enter, now that distance has changed. So that's the other thing that's cool is you can continue to type in dimensions immediately after you've used a tool and it will correct whatever the last action you took. So let me bring that back to two feet, six inches. Now just remember that once you have started a new action, so for instance, if I were to draw a line here, if I want to go back and change the height of this, I can't just click on it and like click down here and type in the dimension. That's not how it works. So what you would have to do is use one of the manipulation tools, which we'll get into, and select those entities and then manipulate it that way. So the measurements box down here ultimately will accept input from you immediately during or immediately after the action that you just took. Okay, so let me delete this line here. So I'll just grab the eraser tool, which is the letter E on the keyboard, and click and drag over that to erase. I also could have done Control Z to undo, which would have been a little bit easier as well. So this box here is just gonna be kind of a reference, a temporary reference, so we can kind of draw on top of it to create all the parts and pieces of the medicine cabinet. So the next thing that we wanna do, and pretty much any time you create a 3D shape, basically as soon as you have turned it into a 3D shape, I recommend converting the entities into a group, or I should say containing them into a group. So what I mean by that is if we select everything here, which you can do by either dragging a selection box with the select tool, which by the way, the select tool is right here and you can always get back to it by tapping the space bar. So if you're in the eraser tool, for instance, you can just tap the space bar and that'll bring the select tool back. So we can click and drag to select everything here or we could also triple click. And what that does is it selects everything connected. Even though you can't see the faces behind here, it's gonna select everything. So we can tell that it's selected because it's highlighted blue and it has the, the uh, blue dotted overlay over all the faces. And then we will turn this into a group. So we're gonna right click and make group. So now what we've done is we've taken all of these edges and faces and instead of having them selected individually and manipulated individually, we've contained them inside of a container called a group. So now we can select this entire box with a single click. And since we are going to be using this as just a reference box, let's go ahead and grab the paint bucket tool, which is letter B and let's try and find a transparent material that we can apply. So maybe we'll go to glass and mirrors and we'll just click on this one here and then apply it. So now we can kind of see through this object so we can see the additional geometry that we're about to create a little more easily. All right, so that's it for this first video. In the next video, we're gonna actually model the box of the medicine cabinet, and it should be coming right up in the playlist, or if not, you can check out the link in the description below. So thanks for watching.